Here we are with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, and uh, we know it always leads to food. What are we going to talk about today? Wines? Wines? Okay. Hey, John, you know Art and I are in California, and of course, uh, Sonoma Valley, Napa Sonoma, that's the famous wine area uh, in the country. But he, down here in Southern California, mm -hmm. uh, Temecula is a big wine area, just really within the last 50 years, I think. But nevertheless, very popular wine area. And I know there's lots and lots of regional wines. You're in New York. Uh, New York State has a lot of uh, wine country up the Hudson River. But on Long Island, if I'm not mistaken, and you could, let me know if I, I've got this right. Long Island has a wine industry, too, do they not? Uh, very much so. Very, very much so. Um, yeah, everybody thinks in terms of American wines as basically California, Washington, um, Oregon <clears throat> and a few others, but wine wineries and vineyards have been really coming a cropper uh, across the United States. Virginia's always had wines, Maryland's always had wines, and some other states uh, uh, too. Uh, but now they're making wine in New Mexico and and, and Texas, and uh, most most of the stuff is not very good. Now in New York, from the times when New York was settled, they grew. Uh, grapes that were native to America, and those were called Labrusca grapes, not Lambrusca, but <clears throat> Labrusca, and they were native, and they said that when the, when the uh, people came across in the Mayflower and so forth, especially off the coast of Virginia, they said they could smell these Scuppernong grapes and others, and they would, had wonderful, wonderful aroma, but they were very much what we call foxy. The foxy had a very pronounced flavor that tasted uh, it was and they had to make them sweet to kind of cover up that flavor but they did early on started to make them in virginia and, and uh, thomas jefferson brought over european vines which didn't do very well so he got out of the wine business um because and so forth uh, the, the california without getting into california state history but in the 19th century was when um people took European vine cuttings and found that they they uh, did very very well in California, not so in New York <clears throat> until recently. So what you had in New York were these Labrusca Labrusca grapes uh, with names like um, uh, Niagara and Erie and Concord. No Concord grape jelly. Let's make from Concord grapes, and the wines kind of tasted that way too, uh, as does Manischewitz, um, which is a sweet wine, uh, a popular before, uh, kosher wine. Um, so <clears throat> what happened was the Finger Lakes developed a reputation for those types of wines, which is a huge area in middle of New York. And then uh, the Hudson Valley <clears throat> uh, developed a high reputation over the last 50, 60 years for hybrids. In other words, they take some uh, European varietals and graft them with uh, American uh, vines, and they got these wines that uh, tasted not like the Labrusca, not quite like the um, uh, European vines, but produced some very, very nice wines. And it's a, a delight to go up the Hudson Valley. Well, to get back to Long Island, only since really the 1950s uh, and 60s uh, did they uh, start planting in Long Island, by which time technology had moved to the point where things like stainless steel fermentation and much, much better understanding of the chemistry of the soil and so forth. They said, you know what? The soil out here in Long Island would probably be good for Cabernet and Merlot and uh, Chardonnay. Let's take a crack at it. And it flourished. It did marvelously well. Uh, all of them. And uh, now it's still, there's 57 distinct wine producers on Long Island. And it's called Long Island because it is a Long Island. It goes all the way to Montauk. And there are vineyards in Montauk. And there's vineyards, uh, vineyards on the north shore of Long Island Sound, or the south, south shore of the Sound, north, north border of uh, Long Island, which is dotted with new wineries. Um, still agricultural areas because the land is very, very expensive, but they're zoned that way. So they cannot be built on. They can't, can't rip out vineyards. And then, uh, believe it or not, uh, way out on the eastern shore of, uh, of uh, Mon Montauk and the Hamptons, which is a very wealthy 
uh, places, summer, summer residents, they're growing wines out there. And some of them are first rate wines. Um, some of them are as good as uh, European Rieslings are, uh, especially they do very, very well with Bordeaux varietals. And you say, well, why haven't I heard about this? And there are a few distinct reasons. First of all, there's not that much of it. Uh, second of all, you will not find it in restaurants. You say, why not? I'll get to that in a second. And <clears throat> go into a wine store, and you're probably not going to find uh, many New York State wines, Long Island wines. You will find New York State wines and so forth um, uh, any longer uh, on shelves. And the reason is that they are so popular at the wineries, those 57 wineries that I produces out there, that one of the great things is to get in your car, go out, visit the wineries and buy on premises. Now they do that widely, as you know, you guys out there in, uh, sure. in California, <clears throat> wine tourism is enormous. And there are wineries like that, which their wines are on allocation or only sent to people who belong to their wine clubs or go to the tasting rooms. Yeah. Yeah. So the same thing now obtains um, on Long Island uh, and the wines are now getting better known, but what uh, the, they need to be better known in order to do more expansion. And there's a new um, organization out there which is promoting them. Um, and they're, they're saying, first of all, we're all very, very sustainable. Um, everybody out here, they're, they're not all rich men. Well, a vin owning a vineyard is a rich man's hobby to start with. But um, there are agricultural areas that try and do the best with what they have, and they're getting better and better and better. And it is a maritime climate that they have, whereas the Finger Lakes has a cold climate. So it's very difficult to make red wines in ice cold Finger Lakes. Yeah. But yeah. on Long Island, where you get the, the warmth of uh, the Atlantic and the Bermuda, uh, what they call the Bermuda current that goes up through there. That, that yeah, the Gulf Stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Gulf Stream. Yeah. So, um, so it, it, it's much easier. And because they're kind of semi protected, uh, even from hurricanes, because hur hurricanes tend to come in from the Atlantic, and they don't have vineyards on the southern shore as mm -hmm. much as on the northern. So if it's going to be blowing over the island, they're not yeah. going to have that much uh, damage. Um, it's getting hotter as it is uh, every place, um, which is not a bad thing because Long Island can get very, very cold. But the ones you want to look for these days, the top performers would be Chardonnay, uh, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Sauvignon Blanc, um, kind of typical, and they taste like New York, Long Island wines. They don't taste necessarily like Bordeaux or Californians. And then there's smaller um, vineyards which are producing like Petit Verdot, Malbec, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, Gewürz, Tramina, Riesling, Chenin Blanc, um, Bordeaux blends. They're doing a great job. And as I said, I cannot run out to my local wine shop and find more than one or two of these wines at best. Um, yeah. But if you're going to be in Long Island, I just, you know, head off the and go go this way, left, left off the new Long Island Expressway, and you'll find these wonderful wines with names like Palmonic and, and, and Palmer mm -hmm. and uh, others that um, are producing very good wine and very rewarding. And they ain't cheap, but they're not as expensive as cult wines from California. Well, that's you know, good uh, to know. Uh, 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 you, when I, I was born in Brooklyn, but I guess when I was probably two or three years old, my parents, uh, uh, to afford a house, uh, had to move out to the island, and uh, they bought a, a place in Far Rockaway. And I remember now that we had a, uh, a, a trellis in the backyard where we had grapes, and we would come up whenever, whenever they, they came in, we would just eat them right off the vine. And our across the street neighbor uh, was the, uh, a family named Gellis, and they had a very uh, a, a thriving wine business. And I didn't even think about it to this day because having moved out to California, we know about Napa Valley, we know about Temecula, certainly down here. But I guess uh, Long Island, because it doesn't appear in the in, in, in stores uh, as much because people have to buy it on premises. Um, it's it's like people should, when they go to New York, go take a wine tour on Long Island. Yeah, well, you know, even during Prohibition, everybody by law was allowed to 
uh, produce their own uh, a, a certain uh, amount of their own wine um, at home. And what they would do is to buy Zinfandel grapes from Long Island or uh, up in New York State or, where, or wherever they're being raised. And uh, they could make the wine um, in their backyards as, as uh, your parents did. Mm. That was the last And also you know, fermented wine at uh, for yeah. in mass. You know, John, uh, people shouldn't be surprised that uh, Long Island is making great wine because I remember as a kid driving out to Long Island uh, to the beach or wherever, it was mostly agricultural land yeah. uh, for many, many years. It's, you know, of course, the city, New York City, moved further out, further out past Queens. Um, and now it's people actually commute from the Hamptons. Yeah. Um, but in between those years, there were potato fields. There were all kinds yeah. of agricultural. Fortunately, you know. fortunately, they still have them. <clears throat> the Long Island potato is still a very fine. It's a russet potato, but it's a very fine potato. And this corn, I mean, right now, most of our corn is coming in from Long Island. And yeah. it's absolutely delicious. One, one thing geneticists, I will say, have done with food is that um, in season, at least, the corn is just phenomenal. It's very, very sweet. And uh, but, but I'm, I'm sure they do this in California, too, with the, the corn. I hope they do that. There'll be a stand with corn cobs on it, corn, corn cobs, and just a sign saying, it's a ten cents a ten cents a uh, yeah a stalk and uh, everybody just leaves the money. Nobody would dare cheat. A couple of mm. reprimands. Uh, yeah. John, thank you so much. And um, next time I'm there, I'm going to bring back a couple of Long Island wines. Do so. Let's surprise your friends. Hours of fun. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.